This is the afternoon session for today, and it's been a lot of pleasure to introduce Matt Wade. Matt Wade is the creative director of Kim, which is a design company in London. Kim works a lot on commercial projects, but they're also a the big unit of their um, sort of overall structures to work a lot on research, and they have top research projects and universities all over the world, particularly Goldsmiths in London and the Barclay, which is also in London and here at Plymouth. Matt is um, the external partner on project 8 and 9 for Ognovo. And um, I'll let him carry on with that. Hello. So this is us. We've been building the barrier when that toilet was part of Kevin. I'm trying to work. One of these is that's a toilet, I think. So, yeah, this is, our, this is our student for all of this. Um, over four floors, barrier with the workshop, and so on. This is, this is what we do. Scanning and saying, must be other ways to remember and document things with digital technology. 
thought there might be an interesting way to explore this with students. Um, I've got a belief that the um, stuff we do is the boring stuff and the stuff you do is the exciting stuff. I, I'm dictated generally by commercial clients and my work is often controlled by someone paying me, whereas with you guys, you have this sort of beautiful bubble of operating with you to find your own parameters and way of working. And that's why we do the connections to academia and so on, because it keeps a little bit of us in those exciting places. Quite a lot of people think the work for us is a place like sense of writing, engagement, but etc. At least it's in crits or do talks or workshops with different universities. Um, for example, this is for Strelko. We went to Russia and the Bachelor's Architecture School, and Kevin and I went to the department. We ran a workshop on the future of the virtual museum, well, that was an idea, with their Polytechnical Museum, which is the Science Museum in Moscow. Um, and uh, we sort of really pissed off the museum, actually, because they wanted to have a result. They wanted to know what their sort of virtual future should be like, and what we did with them really was work on um, design methodologies for the students, and we had a really creative and really exciting workshop. But the um, I think the, unit, the museum wanted to buy something else at the end, wanted to have this as a resource that would create things for them. Uh, but there was a paper in the front, etc. It was quite, I think it went really well. Um, but the main thing we do is we make uh, objects to brief. So this is a, a plane that we made for the um, for example, the type of work I think I'm most interested in that we do. Uh, it's an aeroplane interface for uh, an interactive experience with children at the Museum of Science Industry in Manchester. And we had to make a game, we designed a 20,000 square foot space for everything from uh, 50 graphic panels to the interior architecture to designing furniture. But it's these little objects that I really like, uh, or I'm most interested in. And um, it's, uh, we had to design a game where children learned about the way a plane called the Avro F used to fly. It used to fly by warping its wings instead of using aerolons. Um, and we originally had a flying game where you could fly with a joystick and it would twist its wings on screen and fly a slalom course. But uh, the kids didn't get it, so we ended up making, well, they, they had fun playing the game, but they had no memory or, or learning experience from it. So we ended up making um, a controller where they actually twist the wings and fly the game. So they have a physical, through the physical response um, and the gameplay, they have a stronger recall or memory of the event. So this, this project evolves through a study of the way people learn, different learning styles. So we, we do um, all sorts of diagrams and studies, etc., and, and sort of classic desk-based research. We do a lot of drawing, then we do a lot of model making, then we do more drawing, then we do more research, then we do more drawing or model making, etc. And we have this sort of iterative process of discovery through exercises, design exercises and immersion. We're less interested in the, the design as this thing, as a noun, we're much more interested in the act of doing as uh, design being a verb, the things that we do. And I'm, um, I'm also less interested in how the industry works. Uh, we did a talk recently at DNAD, the professional designer, about being a professional, and about how we sort of care less about what we should be as a professional company. Maybe that means, that's probably why we haven't got much money. <laughs> we love what we do and we love Enjoy it, and I think we could be a lot more commercial than we are. But I'm, I'm not sure about what it is. Um, and more recently, projects like this, we're starting to make things that connect. These are some boats for children where they put together the boats come apart. Parts. You can have a look at my website and read a bit more about it. But they're um, based on the parts that the, the kids put into these boats, they get different responses happening on this screen. Mm -hmm. So there's a communication between the objects and a sort of digital experience. They can learn about cargo or the way um, different uh, brothers might be, or different engines and different masts, etc. And we, um, we also are very, not very precious. This is something we did for Samsung. They asked us to look at the future of video calling. And, um, brief was to not do FaceTime like Apple. And we said there must be more of a brief about what you want to achieve through video calling or some sort of handheld sort of hand devices, it was through tablets, phones, etc. And they said, no, not, not like FaceTime. That's all we care about. <laughs> 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 not FaceTime. So um, we went back and presented things like this. And I 
think we scared them a little bit. <laughs> but we opened up a dialogue or a discussion with them about what, think, what video recording means in sort of contemporary society, etc. And we ended up designing interfaces for phones. But through that, we opened up a dialogue through discussion and so on. And what, we, what I want to do with you today is a bit about design thinking about how we can use processes to uncover problems or try and examine things we think we understand very well. Um, so again, this is an example of a project that we did in the Maritime Museum about a learning tablet. And this is, this is I think I've shown this one before, but it's, um, it's an example desk at work where the way people might work. That's the person sitting next to me. Um, and from the work we were doing, it's about we had to create something to engage uh, 15 and 16 year olds in gallery content as they move around, historical objects as they move around galleries. And we ended up working with um, Artfinder a little bit and different technologies where you can photograph um, objects in the museum with a tablet and it does image recognition on that object, it pulls up the record card from the um, archive. And uh, we designed all sorts of different methods or techniques and look at this idea of a sort of digital handheld mobile computer and the fact that it could, you could walk past an object and it could signal to you, I'm here, or we'll try and tell you a story. And in the end it's just a camera that we designed. It's actually very simple because in the end we, we dumped a lot through testing with with the right age group, they're just much more interested in the idea that they can have this camera and they go around and take photos. And at least they interact with the content of the gallery and all these clever ideas we had aren't in the project, but through doing all of that thinking and so on, we got to this really simple idea. Um, and the reason we show this is we did all the standard stuff about doing the interface, etc. But for me, the most interesting part is we weren't paid to do this bit, but we ended up designing the case for the object as well. Um, because we, we try to argue to the museum that you can't simply have the handheld device without thinking about how it feels in the hand, because that's an intrinsic part of experiencing it as you move around. And also, we're quite interested in the idea of props, so to, to give the um, young person something they understand as a tablet, they, they always want to understand what it is and they know how to use it, but by masking it or creating some other looking thing, it can, they can suspend their disbelief. Was it belief or disbelief? Suspend their belief. Disbelief. Yeah, both make sense, don't they? Yeah. Um, so through these studies in this drawing, through that, is where we start to interrogate this as an object, looking at how um, how might one of these people use it, what's their sort of demographic, do they are they respectful of these things, they have no real ownership over it. So we designed a structural cardboard cheap, effective thing that the museum can use so we could wrap the prototype very fast. Yeah. And then we worked with the sale maker down in Barking, and old, this amazing 80-year-old guy who's kind of lost all his work because of docks and clubs. And he made these sailcloth covers using brass rivets, and we got him involved in the design process. So working with experts, obviously, in which is a project, I'm sure it's you know, as you will do. And that brings me to this. This is, um, so I've done a research project with, um, I have, we have as a studio, been quite involved myself, mainly doing it with John and Jane um, and Nick Ryan, the sound designer in London, about um, uh, creating uh, software tools and uh, samplers. Uh, this one we created called the Neural Brand of Sample. It takes tiny fragments of sound and it's about exploring patterns within music. But we, you might, um, you might disagree, you might be wrong. Yeah. I should though, we've been doing it for years. <laughs> They're, um, and this is the sort of media that I come across. I have no, I have no um, background in um, this sort of area of cognitive science and so on. And things like this, I find really hard to understand. And it might be something that you will look at and go, oh, I can look at that, I can see what the different things mean, things are happening across the time. There's a raster plot, all right, that's, I can frame that and give it context. I get completely lost. And we have to get to something as designers that we can, um, uh, give to an audience or people that can um, uh, interpret or understand. So I have to try and understand it ourselves, work with people like John and Jane who understand it, and then work together to find a way to make that intelligible or understandable for an audience. And we did an installation at the BFI where we created a sound-based version of this, where um, a physical version of neurons sort of firing or a representation of what we were doing scientifically. For people to understand in an arts event it has to be intriguing, it has to be understandable, and so on. And it was a really complex project. And also, it's convinced the funders of this, the Arts Council and 1.0 Festival, to put it on. This was an interesting thing, and it would be 
um, understood by the audience. The Arts Council, I think, quite interesting. Shane Walter, who runs One Point Zero, was really concerned that people wouldn't get this strange, esoteric thing we were designing, or we were interested in, or he got. But the audience, he couldn't put it in his festival unless it makes sense to the to just people walking past. And um, it looks. I'll show you a little clip of it in the end of the film. Um, some of you might have seen it. Um, and it looks like this at the end. The way we got to that <coughs> is through um, trying to understand or break down what's happening in the science into uh, and create relationships to the context of music and sound and so on. So this is actually part of a one page of a document which is part of the new Grammar sample we developed where we start to look at the patterns of music and firing of firing events um, with neurons in the in the brain. They um, Tim also is involved as a programmer, he doesn't work here anymore, he works up in New York. Yeah. His developer works up in New York, who um, uh, based on a, um, a model, a paper by Zakevich, wrote a algorithm that we use for most of the projects that um, takes these firing patterns and um, incorporates it into software that we can use with music as plugins. And I get the stuff that Tim's done, and I, and I I can see it's very interesting, but I don't always, always understand the processes that are happening. So using these diagrams, they help us work it out. But actually, before the diagrams, there have been a lot of drawings. We're trying to understand through art making, drawings, making models of things. These are just some drawings I found in the original work when we were discussing how we could do the plasticity of that project, even down to the way software might work with that technique. Sorry, I'll explain what it is. It's um, Plasticity is an installation at the BFI, British, British Film Institute. It's been at Google Campus as well, looked at it in London. But it was um, and at an institute out in Germany. It's a, a public installation uh, in a gallery space where we have um, we explore the idea of, of input into a system and something out and how it feeds or a system reacts to this input from um, visitors to that space. And outside the space, as you enter it, on the walls there's six microphones, and they represent sound or stimulus into the system. And inside the space are uh, 16, I think 16, um, sorry, microphones on the outside, speakers on the inside. And when you speak into the microphones, the sound goes into the um, computer, and it's reframed, and every time the stimulator has to make a firing event, it's passed to the speakers and it plays a little bit of sound out. So I can shout to these speakers, hello, and they might go pep, 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 across the um, speakers. And over the course of three days, different patterns emerge. And every time one of the speakers, one of the speakers fired, um, the sound comes out, but it lights up as well to tell the visitor that there's something happening, an event.
that you understand, I assume you understand very well, I think you understand very well, and that's the idea of networks. And looking at exploring how you communicate or, or um, the idea of a network in groups um, through a sort of repeated exercise. Um, and it relates back to this thing, like something you understand very well, something that makes a lot of sense to people, and trying to find new ways to understand that. And I, this is a project by Martino Gamble, just as a reference. He's a designer who um, did an amazing project called 100 Chairs for 100 Days. And he made a new chair every day. It's been exhibited all over the world. And it's through the, rep the repetitive act of interrogating an object you know really well that he started to explore new ways of constructing chairs. And every, every part of a chair is from an existing <coughs> chair as well. So they're all chairs he found in the street or he got from friends. So even using parts he knew very well, he reframed or remade all these objects. For the idea being that when he gets to the 100th chair, he'll have found the perfect chair. The hundredth one looks like the first one, they all look like <laughs> um, Frankenstein objects. But they're fascinating. And through the, the pain of having to find newness, he started to explore new ways to go. And I've met some of you, and what, I've, what I know about the, the programme is there's a, a mad diversity of people here. So just out of the people I've met, there are people who you know, design, people who develop software, there's people who you know, have backgrounds as a dancer, I'm sorry. People who have backgrounds as a dancer, as a puppet, puppeteer and so on. Um, I'm sure there's people that can draw, you know, all these things. I want you to find at least 50 ways of representing a network. countries, well, <laughs> countries, um, this is a network of coffee sticks, a couple here of, uh, this is like a network of water systems, top down view, a what? water based systems, cool. connecting, uh, the more they run, the bigger the water stream gets. It's like a strengthening associations. It's a motherboard. It's a network of electronic stuff. Free <laughs> <Pretty> tool network. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to do it. We have to think about networks on different levels. We start out with the atom, which is a pretty much a network between the positive and negative currents within, at the very small level and um, got up to the next level which would be the waters and all this. So then this is an honor ring which is the model of the solar system, the drawing of the ring. We were like very much focused on the idea of like, um, local networks becoming global networks and yeah. how there's interconnection between them and how focusing in on something really small and then moving out and seeing the same process in all these different areas. So for us networks were pretty much points with a connection, so that's how we define networks in our group. Another one would be the airplanes traveling between countries, so for example between London and New York. Um, global spending networks like World of Warcraft would be a very um, social driven network. Thinking about the weight tables, 
Anything else? Just Facebook, the social network. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's do that one. And on a more older level, that's me, my sibling, my father, and mother, yeah. and going up <laughs> yeah. through all the yeah. text, through the women, and stuff. And we had the idea of uh, tagging your neighbor. So we were going to play tag in front of you. Very informative, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Good idea. You're welcome to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, let's just move on. One more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We had like this idea of um, interacting with one another um, and obviously networking on any level isn't successful unless it's synchronised. So Tara and Guy came up with quite a cool sound way of, of doing it. So we're going to try and do it, but if it doesn't work, it's not our fault. When? We think. Together. Uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, good. I want to go through everyone and then we're going to come back and do something with all the things that you've done. Right? <laughs> so we'll come back to it. Um, so this group, Diego's group, actually, is walking away. <laughs> <laughs> Network is nodes instead of connections. Here's the, um, very much like the popsicle one. What if nodes didn't exist beforehand? That's kind of the idea that nodes exist and then they're connected. What if connections exist beforehand and where there are overlapping of connections, that's where a node emerges? So this is kind of a representation of that. Here's a, a adjacency matrix representation. So you have vertices and then you have a matrix representing who's connected to what. This is similar. This is a um, uh, defining a network is a set of edges and vertices, so this is a more formal notation. We also have this idea that what if nodes and connections were not so separate? What if a node kind of tapers off and then it becomes a connection and becomes a node again? So it's more like this. Um, a node is also a database, or uh, sorry, a network can be a set of, can be thought of as a database. It can represent things, and we can recognize things using that. Networks also have properties like centrality, all these measures. Centrality, between us, maybe we can characterize a, networks, a, a network just in terms of, um, of its values. What if a network, instead of nodes and connections, were really a set of waves and the interference patterns creates those, network, those connections and those nodes? Um, and what else? Oh, here. What if we think of, <laughs> what if we think of nodes as something that's embedded in, say, the, in a fabric. Like, you know how space-time is actually, can be thought of as a, of a fabric, and, and where the um, objects are, there's, they kind of weigh down the fabric. What if the connection was then kind of the shortest distance between the center of each kind of thing weighted? I'm not making sense. What if, what if, what if a node, um, what if that nodes or networks were really kind of intersections of planar things in space? And again, like very much like this thing, where there are intersections, that's a connection, where there are lots of intersections, they become nodes. Um, I'll stop there and uh, let Michael take over. Uh, we thought about like one way to represent a network would, would be through its builder. So mm -hmm. the thing that builds the network. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, then one idea is uh, in philosophy we zone by the nurse who are tiny, so we just to bring some postmodern French uh, stuff in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can Someone represent networks through a puzzle. Like this is the Königsberger uh, bridge problem, mm -hmm. where, where, where networks pose problems to you, like how can I, can I cross all the bridges without going twice into one intersection? Um, then. Uh, one thing would be response times, or the time signals travel through the network. That's the internet, global internet response time. Uh, uh, then art, well, art could be like a way to represent networks. So this is, a, on the back it says the whole internet. 
and it's a piece of art by um, Ryder Pips who put up the whole internet uh, in this bag. And there's a hand below it so it can catch the whole internet if it falls down. <laughs> um, one way would be like a structuralist idea would to cut the connections between the, uh, the nodes and see what happens in the network. Um, yeah. Yeah, me? Okay. So first I would like to refer to my networks I present more new networks of uh, ideas in the art piece, how they construct. And my idea, first idea, how I wanted to visualize that last year is what, was to make this installation uh, in the place where the piece of art actually was. And it was kind of cubics when you can sit down, and each cubic was the describe of one idea, which were related with the piece of art we are watching to. And then on the floor there was connection, so you can, you, you actually could go through that, through the space, from one idea to other idea, to see how they are related to each other, and what, what, how from one idea another idea developed, and how it goes into more details. At the same time, it was very, very, uh, utility style, so you can sit down on those and just watch what the, they produce. And uh, another thing I was thinking about, it's kind of game, it's called gift game. So you have this kind of big round table and chairs around so you can sit. And you basically can uh, give a gift for another person, but you don't know how network is constructed. So you can discover the, the network between the players by playing, basically. So you are giving a gift and just trying to figure out who is smiling. And after a few rounds, you have kind of idea of the network, how it appears and how we are connected with this kind of artificial, very artificial network under the table. Uh, so then you can go for more like advanced level and trying to really reach your target quite quickly. And uh, another, f another idea, it's this, this idea, it's a little bit more about the brain, I guess. So, like, networks in the brain, usually it's uh, these neurons which are connected to each other, and there are neurotransmitters which are going to, from one, uh, from, uh, one uh, neuron to another, and then it's going uh, around. So the idea is to make three-dimensional aquarium, where you have bubbles, like glass bubbles, and collection, like canals between these bubbles, and it's quite three-dimensional. And then you have fishes inside, which are floating between the balls. So it's a little bit like neurotransmitters. And then <laughs> you can add a little bit of food to one of the uh, uh, neurons. It's a little bit like spark there, mm -hmm. and every fish are going there eating and then going to the different dimension where the food is ended. Uh, so, yes, we are here. And then there's like... Uh, hmm? Okay, I can not present my own idea. <laughs> no, I'm in the middle, but okay. <laughs> I can keep on that keep for the end. So I talked about, uh, like, for instance, this can be a network of inspiration. Uh, I talked about the music uh, genre, music styles. Uh, I think, like, for instance, in some music, uh, the, there's a connection. Uh, I, it's like a network of network. For instance, hip hop music is connected to funk music and soul music and these music styles. So uh, there's a network is built through music, and there's a network built over this network because of the people who are listening to this kind of music. So I thought it's a network is network. Another network I came up with the what was animals. For instance, birds. When they have to immigrate through the seasonal changes, they build a network because of their instinctual needs. Another network I came up with was the idea of culture. I think uh, you can see it like culture is the biggest network because it's affecting all of the things in our society, like our policies, our relations, our families. So we are building a network through culture, I think. And I also think that 
children are building network through just by playing randomly in the park. So these are my ideas. Can we speak Just a few of mine, but they're not, I'm not very good at drawing, as you'll see in a bit. Um, I was just thinking of islands and bridges and how they connect, or you know, how they can be a network. I was also thinking of um, calligraphy and the way we write and how individual letters don't make sense, but as you link them, a word appears and that makes sense. Um, also about the paid forward game, where you do a good thing for three people and then each of those people do something nice for another three and so on until it becomes big. Um, and also movement in dance and how you can represent that. Is it the truck? Yeah, movement, fun. yeah, and how one movement leads to the other, and so on, and you accomplish a dance. Um, and I think all oh, chemistry formulas as well. I think you mentioned and HDL things like that. And I think that's it. Mm -hmm. And then those the, the game ones. Oh yeah. So so now sorry. So uh, there are three more. So the one thing things is uh, the game, like physical game. So you again you have. Uh, kind of room, quite big, when on the floor there are paths which uh, are constructed a little bit like neurons in the, in the brain and the connection between them. And the game is that you can make as far by yourself by running from the point to point after the light, for example. So you need to really run from one neuron to another <coughs> to make some kind of thought. And on a group level, of course, like usually this kind of things in the brain uh, uh, had to have quite a lot of players, no one. So we need to do that collectively and go running through the floor of this path, quite synchronized to achieve the goal, to make a thought. And there was another thing about a little bit moving. So I invited a dance score about uh, social networks and about our uh, placement in the environment so the, the score is quite simple just like if you have a space just place yourself in the space see how other people place in the space and if you are not happy with your place for example you are in here and how the group is there in the con corner and you feel isolated just change your place so you can change your place and the other people changing their place according to the dynamics is going on so with a little bit of practice, it gives kind of dynamic of people relationship between them and how they gathering together and speak again and how it's, how the personal dates works. And the other was quite easy, like the last one, just to represent. And again, I can I think any kind of network, but it was I was thinking about social networks that you have balls which are just. Uh, it's called hanging from the from the top and they are going goes together closer for example based on the magnets like electromagnets going closer if they they collaborate and going apart if they're not collaborate and then you can play with lights with them have again very physical representation Here is it? Is it your group? Yeah. We've got uh, three more, haven't we? Is this group here? Yeah, it will be quick. Well, I will. I was thinking about yes. Yeah. I bet also there's people talking about things. I'm sure people have mentioned things that you've already yeah. you've thought yeah. about as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. I, 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 was, I was thinking about you had a map before. I picture of a map. I was thinking about uh, sort of you'd have cities and the connections between them. Yeah. It'd be uh, like roads and whatnot. And I think that's quite a limiting way of looking at um, having a network over a yeah. country is quite a limiting way uh, of looking at a place and just so much more to explore. So I thought it'd be quite interesting to represent the country as a big network and see how much you miss by because there's so much to explore. Um, another thing was uh, I quite like I like trees. Um, <laughs> and you can represent uh, like like uh, genetics almost, like a tree of life, 
So I was like drawing pictures of trees to get them, get them to breed, to make like a combination of both and have a new tree and it keeps going down and keep making different combinations of trees in a tree of life, which I thought was quite fun. Um, and uh, this, this was something I'd done for my, um, for research I'd done in undergraduate. Um, you can rep um, we can represent uh, pictures in three-dimensional space, uh, like X, Y, and uh, like literally say, of how bright the pixel is. And um, for each pixel, you can connect it to its nearest neighbors to make a big network. And you can run some uh, network analysis on that network. And uh, for the, the yeah, the, the page rank algorithm is just quite interesting way of looking at networks. And uh, yeah, so I made like an interesting point detection algorithm uh, based on networks. So using it as a principle for Yeah, yeah, you can just represent pictures and yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so my approach was to first try to figure out what was the most abstract possible theoretical basis for a network. And then look at I think it's very similar to yours actually, which is and then look at ways in which I could uh, uh, make the edges and the nodes concrete. Uh, and so, ways that we involve people, for example, might be, so might, for example, you could make people take the place of, uh, of the nodes. And in that case, if you want to put on the brain, you put each person in a completely dark room where they have no idea what is around them, and you give them a couple of buttons that send electric impulses to the people around them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a sadistic experiment. <laughs> Makes you smile. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's funny, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, it's <laughs> but if you had to make it happen, you would probably yeah. choose a more rewarding signal than. Uh, Replace the, the electric by a small, tiny LEDs. They yeah, can for light. Yeah. Light yeah. up here. Yeah. It's more into our speed. Yeah. Speed up there. John has a similar. John has a piece with a, an orchestra with LEDs. I think they're like that. Yeah. Uh, you could also have uh, uh, the opposite, which is uh, people act as, uh, as the edges. Uh, in which case, for example, the nodes could be uh, like a screen, and people move from screen to screen every time they carry a little something with them, which would influence what is shown on the, on the next screen. Uh, another way, yet, yeah, would be to have people represent both the nodes and the edges, and then their mind would be the node, and their body would be the edges. So you have people. Like playing on the floor, uh, holding hands, or maybe holding someone's feet, or whatever. And someone starts doing, I can't do it, but like a wave. <laughs> it just propagates like, a, like, like, a, like in a stadium, the, the hola. Yeah? Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, people figure out which way, yeah, like, you know, maybe they want to, maybe it comes from there, they want to continue like this, or whatever. Um, and, yeah. uh, yeah, well, the right, another idea would be to use the kind of similar to what Clara was seeing about people judging the place. So you use um, maybe a picture that maybe you have seen, which is you have a bunch of fish in the sea, and you have a few sharks, and all the fish are within one meter of each shark, uh, which is very impressive to see. And maybe if you could, and the way they do this, if I'm not mistaken, is that just look at the nearby fish, yeah. and they move the position based on that. Uh, and obviously the first fish just moves corresponding to the shark. And maybe if you could uh, highlight what, what is going on as a propagation, so highlight the connection between the fish that lead to this emerging behavior, you have a good idea of how the information spreads within this network of fish. Um, you can see nice examples of flocking with mm. connections between them yeah. and those where people just connect them. Yeah. And you get that strange. It looks really different when they're connected, actually. Mm. Yeah, okay. It's interesting to look at. And then, yeah, I think that's probably. Oh, yeah, and then yet another idea would be to just use a um, uh, find a collection of examples from the tech animals, and then you take the most basic idea of a network between them, which would be the evolutionary uh, network, and then you can, to get the idea of the network away from this one network, you can change different ways to make a network between them. So, for example, Instead of classing them genetically, you can uh, uh, classify them by how they look like. Uh, similarity, so then the dolphin will give you the fish. Or by, cute, or by cuteness. And then the, <laughs> the dolphin will give you the baby cat. <laughs> and then if you, if you do this with a lot of different ways, then maybe you can abstract the idea of a network. Yeah, that's interesting. Is that anyone else from there?
Yeah, two more. Yeah. But actually, yeah, we have more of a discussion, I would say. Yeah, it's fine. But, uh, <laughs> but actually, we, we talked about if you, I mean, instead of finding concrete domains, uh, then you could just start by making a sort of top-down approach, where you simply would, you know, for instance, draw the alphabet and say what, what kinds of relations do you actually get from, from, uh, from some random objects, in a way. So, I mean, in, in a sense, you could just boil every uh, network down to, um, to entities and relations between the different entities. So, for instance, if you look at the alphabet, you would have, say, different relationships be between the different nodes, and then you could have relationships between, between uh, relationships. And then we talked about, I mean, whenever you talk about networks, you would simply have to account for the, for the shape of the network. So, so whatever network you have, you, you could make some kind of um, visual re representation of it. Um, yeah, so we didn't make that many uh, concrete uh, examples, but we talked a lot about the, mm. yeah, the, the, the properties of networks. Yeah, definitely. For example, you can have networks in multi-dimensional space, so most of the time we are restricting ourselves to think on a two-dimensional plane, but you can obviously use a third coordinate, you have the x and the y coordinates, but you have kind of a z um, coordinate as well. But there are actually no restrictions to the multi how do you say, multi-dimensionality of the network. So basically, there could be an infinite number of dimensions just because we don't experience more than three dimensions in ordinary life. That's more a restriction to our cognitive capacity than to the mathematical modeling approaches. But what I found quite interesting is actually. Um, when you think about who of you is um, familiar with, with fractality or with the Mandelbrot set, so not all of you. So, for example, um, the Mandelbrot set means you have a structure which basically repeats itself ad infinitum. Okay, so you have these repercussions going on, and I think just thinking about networks on a macro and a micro level. When you fly with the plane, you see all these cities and all these streets leading to the cities. The cities could be like nodes, and that might be information which is traveling on the highways. The same is true for the networks we have in our brains. So just drawing these analogy, analogies between different levels might be an interesting starting point. And yeah, we have a lot of um, networking going on in general, for example, facial mimicry. Just now, as we are talking, we are basically mimicking our facial expressions. Um, when I'm smiling, you might smile a little bit as well. But on the other hand, there are different um, networks. For example, I talked to that with Ivana. Um, there are pheromonal processes going on. When women live together in a dormitory for a long period of time, they synchronize their uh, period, which is also a synchronicity effect in the network. Yeah, what else have we got? Um, I mean, there can always be networks which also propagate backwards, so you can have different structures in networks, they don't have to go in a linear fashion. There might be complex feedback loops, so you get very complex geometrical structures, and I think playing around with geometry is in general a quite valid approach. So for example, you can have this um, exponential function, then you can have a linear function, then you can have a more uh, zigzag function, for example, then you can have a tree structure, but you can also imagine there might be different node structures with feedback loops which connect. So just thinking about it in a geometrical way, where you play around with all shapes, might be a fruitful approach as well. So that's it. Okay, good.